Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Michelle, and today we're going to be talking about Daniel Green's Bob. And by Bob, I mean Breach of Peace, because yes, the clever disheveled goblin did label his book a Bob. It's like that book, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing, where when you label the title, you better deliver. And I actually feel like in this case, Daniel did deliver. I'm going to try my best to stay away from spoilers because I am releasing this before the book is out. Let's go ahead and dive in to Breach of Peace by Daniel Daniel Green. First of all, he says he doesn't know why it's classified as a horror. You're kidding, right? Okay. I literally, I literally gagged like 10 times reading this story because there's one, two, several bodies that are very gross. And then there is this thing that's incredibly gross. I can't explain anything without giving any spoilers, but it created a really cool subplot actually because the character was dealing with this really gross thing after it happened. So that was a cool subplot and it helped with building character development. But um, yeah, having that repeated imagery was, um, not enjoyable, but did it make it any less enjoyable as a story? Actually, it enhanced the story because I think it made the main character more relatable and made the whole story a lot more grounded in reality because we're talking about some things that are a little bit outside of the realm of normality. You know, I can't say why, but it's outside of the realm of normality. I mean, he's a fantasy author, so you can you can fill in the details with your mind's imagination all you like. But I think that it, it really, when I was reading the story, some of these scenes were so viscerally real. I felt like I was in the moment and my heart was pounding and racing while I was reading this character deal with things. And I really enjoyed that element. The main character had a really cool quirk where she was, you know, uh, a chain smoker trying to deal with that. And I find it really interesting how he handled that. Cause you know, if somebody is so addicted to something that they don't even realize that they're doing it, they're not gonna talk about it all the, all the time. But other characters might recognize that they're doing it and say something. And and I think that he played into that really well. So it wasn't like, you know, a lot of authors, they like draw attention to things that their characters are doing as if the character would be aware that they're doing it. It'd be like if you scratched your head and you say that you scratch your head. I mean, most of the time you're doing that subconsciously. So why would you say that? And it's third person limited. So the narrator would also not have to say that. So I thought that was actually really well done. And that brings us into the first topic, which is the characters. The main character, Clid, I think that's how he wanted it said, Clid, it was like a K-H together, Clid. He even can't even pronounce it right, so sorry, I tried. <laughs> it's one of those, um, I'm pretty sure it's Clid, 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 something like that. Anyway, this character is very well-rounded and she goes through a very interesting journey throughout the story, she has to deal with some crazy circumstances and the way that she deals with it often is pretty unexpected. There were some things that she did I wasn't expecting her to do, but it also made sense that she did it in the moment. So I think that her character was really, really well developed and really well designed. And like I said, um, she had this like cigarette smoking quirk and that was handled incredibly, incredibly well. And then there were a couple side characters, the main two being the other two inspectors. And Daniel himself has said that he didn't really intentionally make them characters that changed. And he did that on purpose because there was no real point to them. They're in their 30 somethings. They don't really need any reason to change. Everyone handles things differently. You know what I'm saying? That being said, I do have some criticisms for those two side characters. I understand that they don't really need to grow. Um, and I wouldn't expect a whole lot of character development necessarily from side characters. But what I would like, first of all, with, with, the black eyed inspector. I wish that I had more time with him to actually know who he was. I feel like I hardly knew who he was. I knew how the main character felt about him. That was very clear, but I didn't really know who he was. And that kind of frustrated me because I felt like I was supposed to. I felt like I was supposed to infer certain things about who he was based on how he was talked about. But I wish that I got a little bit more of that um, to really like flesh him out in my mind because in my mind, he's kind of this like gray blob of a person who doesn't really have a defined personality. So I would have liked to see just a little bit more so that I could solidify how, how he is as a person. 
And then when it comes to the other inspector, this is the one that Daniel Green intentionally kind of made like Sherlock. And I definitely got some Sherlockian vibes from this guy. Incredibly smart. He's figuring out things on his own. He doesn't really need other people to help. He's very socially awkward. And I think those elements were handled really well. I think that he made for a very interesting character, especially early on in the story. My criticism with that character is that he felt a little inconsistent as a character. It seemed like he was one way in some scenes and a different way in another scene. I just wish there was a little bit more consistency with who he was because I think it could have made more of an impact if he was a little bit more consistent as a character so that when certain things happened, it was more impactful as a reader and you're like, wow, okay, because that to me is one of my most favorite things about reading is seeing the characters do things that I wouldn't necessarily expect and to be taken aback by it. I was definitely taken aback by the circumstance. I think that the way everything was built up was really well done. I just wish again that there was just a little bit more consistency from that particular character. When it comes to plot, I think that the plot pacing was fantastic. I was burning through the pages. There was only one little area and it was like when we were getting to meet the inspector general or whatever his name is, he's like the main honcho of the precinct. There were some times when I felt like it dragged a little bit, like a tiny, easy, easy bit at the very beginning. But then the rest of it, that's like the only time the plot ever really felt um, like it didn't really match everything else that was going. But everything else was very engaging. I think I'm a target demographic because I really love mystery stories. I really love detective stories. I myself am writing a detective story. So it is something that I naturally enjoy reading. So it was like extra fun that it was unique and something I hadn't seen. And the pacing and the plot twists were delivered incredibly well. I was definitely shocked by some of the things that happened, but also some of the things were really well foreshadowed in little subtle comments that happened throughout the story that you don't really connect until it actually happens. So I feel like when I reread it, when I get the physical copy, I'm going to be able to see where those little foreshadowing moments were, which is going to be really exciting. I don't, I don't really have any criticisms for the plot itself. I think that it was fun. The only criticism I have is I wish it, I wish it was a little longer. I wish we got a little bit more time with all the characters and with this story so I could learn a little bit more about the world. But as he said, he's working on the second one already. So hopefully I won't have to wait too long to get more into this world. Something that really matters to me when I'm reading a story is the theme. What, what is the purpose of this story? And I think that the theme the themes of this story revolve around religion and military and police and how all those things can kind of converge in a society and how that would level out, like how all those things would start to balance with each other and where issues might come in a society that has to deal with this weird setup of having a military that's incredibly religious and a police force that also is kind of religious, but also wants to protect the people at all costs. When those two ideals kind of clash, how's that gonna play out? And I think that that's a really interesting thing to focus on. I think a lot of times we like to say, oh, you know, separation of church and state, all this stuff, but you know, in the, in the real world, that doesn't happen. Um, there is not really any separation of that and being able to draw attention to that and to delve deeper into those concepts is really fascinating. I saw a review where he said they said that he was glorifying cops. I don't get that. I don't think at all he was glorifying cops or um, police or military in general. It definitely seemed like an overall relatively dark look on all these things where you want to sympathize with the people but the groups as a whole have significant issues. And I think that's what he's pointing out during this discussion of the story. So I think that there's a lot of things to talk about with regard to the theme. And I am actually really intrigued to see what the next stories add to the theme and how they build upon that theme and, and explore it further. Because from what I've seen, he did say he was going to delve further into those themes, which Again, my favorite thing about a story is characters and themes, so I'm really excited to see what happens in the upcoming releases. The pros, okay, this is a first time writer. People are gonna have opinions about the pros. I didn't really find any issues with the pros. There were a few things in like chapter six. Chapter six was the one that stood out to me as having the 
like most clunky, clunky pros. And there are definitely pro snobs out there. But for myself, this is exactly the kind of prose I want to read. I don't want it to be fancy. I don't want it to be fluffy. I just want it to be to the point. It kind of reminded me of Stephen King a little bit. It wasn't super complicated, but I actually learned some new words from this story that I didn't know, which was fun. And there were some really clever things that he did with the prose actually, especially in the earlier chapters, there were some really clever moments with the way things were worded and how those built the character development. I think I had, okay, I pulled a line. I wrote it down because I liked it so much. And this line is, when it came to childish rivalry between Sam and Chap, the only way to get things done was to exhaust them with professionalism. <laughs> I had to stop, I had to write it down because I was dying. I wish that like my reaction right now were quite as genuine as it was right then, but I assure you, I was dying of laughter reading that line. Anyway, I just love that line. It stuck out to me. It will live in my, in my brain along with the imagery that I can't tell you guys about without spoiling anything. <laughs> All that being said, you guys probably wanna know what I would rate it and I'm gonna be honest with you guys because first of all, I respect Daniel enough to be honest, 100% transparent about my opinion. I think the plot is like a nine out of 10. There was just a couple of things that I would change, but overall it's really solid and I really enjoyed the plot twist. The characters I'd say are a seven out of 10. I think there's a lot of potential there and I would just like to see it cleaned up a little bit and I think that it could be really fantastic. I rated the themes at about an eight out of 10. I think that they're really interesting themes. They aren't necessarily themes that speak to me as much. And I think a lot of that is because I didn't get to explore the society as much because when I, my favorite themes really explore the society and how society as a whole handles things. And we got hints of it, but not the full taste. So I'm sure that as the stories progress, I'm gonna be more and more invested in the theme. Overall, I'd say that this book is actually a pretty solid eight out of 10. Um, there's a couple of criticisms, but I would say that for a first time author and for a first release, this book is way beyond what I expected. I had read some other little short stories by Daniel and I was blown away by this. First of all, he wrote this really quickly. Second of all, it's just really interesting and fun to read. And I found myself, like I said, flipping through the pages as quickly as possible to get the story into my brain and to figure everything out. And I believe that upon rereads, I might see more details that I missed that will add to the mystery and maybe help me speculate about what's gonna come next in the story. So at the end of the day, I would highly recommend that you pick up this book, first of all, to support a fellow human being who's trying to get into writing. Second of all, because he's a number one Amazon seller, well, he was for a day, in multiple categories, which is just so cool. Congratulations, Daniel, that's freaking fantastic. Um, and three, because it's a good book. You should read it because it's a good book. It's quick, it's short, and it's interesting. That's all my thoughts on Breach of Peace. It was a bop, and I hope that you guys get to enjoy the bop when it releases this March 30th. If you are interested in reading the story, I will put the link down below where you can check out the ebook, audiobook, or physical book. You can pre-order it for, again, March 30th. And if you're interested in learning more about Daniel and his writing process, I will be having him on my channel in the next week so that we can discuss how his process was like writing this book. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope that you have a beautiful, amazing, fantastic day. Bye!